the essentials of pediatric ultrasound. We're going to look now, going back to acute problems in the scrotum, discuss the ultrasound features of torsion, which is what we're always concerned with, but then look at other features and findings of acute scrotal diseases. So the acute scrotum is defined as acute swelling, scrotal swelling and pain, and it's one of the common presentations to the emergency department or a clinical practice. Ultrasound is still the study of choice. We examine the patient supine, you elevate the scrotum, high resolution transducer, small part setting, warm gel, grayscale and Doppler image, and sagittal transverse. Normal. Pretty straightforward, ovoid shape, uniform low to midline level echoes. And you see this linear echogenic mediastinum, which contains fibrous tissue, and it supports the tubes and vessels that cross the testis. Occasionally, you're going to see a hypoechoic band. That's not abnormal, okay? That's not a fracture. Um, put color on it, because sometimes you can actually see the transtesticular vessels on grayscale. Also, look for the epididymis. You'll see the head that's easy just on top of the testis. It's isocoic to the testis. But you can scan from the head around the testis and see the body and the tail. Testicular vascular anatomy. And this is the key point of doing Doppler and making the diagnosis of torsion. The testicular artery comes off the aorta. It's the primary blood supply for the testis, and it gives rise to capsular arteries and centripetal arteries. These are the ones that go into the testes. These are the ones you want to see. There are cremasteric and deferential arteries that supply the epididymis and peritesticular tissues, but when we do ultrasound and Doppler of the testis, we want to look at the branches off the aorta. We want to look at the centripetal arteries. So this is a capsular vessel. These are intertesticular vessels, the centripetal arteries, and they can cross from one side to the other. You'll see these vessels in all pubertal testes. Here we are again. Okay. In the prepubertal testes, you may not always see them. Sensitivity of color Doppler You'll see them maybe up to 83% of the time. If you use power Doppler, you'll see them a little bit more. What do we do in the prepubertal testis if there's pain? If we can't see color, then all we can do is compare the two sides for echogenicity and size. That's as good as it gets. Resistive index, the pubertal testis has higher diastolic flow peaks than the prepubertal testis. The resistive index differs. Prepubertal, it's higher because there's lower diastolic flow. Pubertal, about 0 0.57 or 6. Okay. The key point about Doppler, testicular flow is only reliably shown by placing the Doppler cursor in the center of the testis. You want to see flow in these vessels. You don't want to see it in the periphery or only on the periphery. You have to document it in the center. So acute scrotum, common diagnosis, torsion. There are two types, intravaginal, extravaginal. Appendicillin torsion, epididymitis. Less common, vasculitis, idiopathic scrotal edema trauma. Intravaginal torsion. This is the one you're familiar with. It occurs in pubertal boys 12 to 18 years of age. And it's called intravaginal because it occurs within the tunica. Okay. The tunica covers the testis and part of the cord here. And the cause is failure of fusion of the tunica to the testis, which doesn't completely close, so the testis can twist. Patients present with acute scrotal pain and swelling may have nausea and vomiting. It's an emergency because rapid diagnosis is needed. If you make the diagnosis in the first six hours, you get about 100% salvage rate. Six to 12 hours, 70%, 12 to 24 hours, 20%. 24 hours, uh, it's too late. That's what you get. Hemorrhagic infarcted testis. Echogenicity is not reliable alone for the early, early diagnosis. At four hours, it's normal. Four to six, maybe hypo or hypoechoic. 
24 hours, you're going to make the diagnosis. It's heterogeneous, and then it's too late. Okay? Sensitivity of grayscale for an abnormality, only about 80%. That's why we use color, which we'll get into in a minute. Two hours of the left testicular pain. Right, left. Yeah, you see the um, mediastinum right testis here? Looks normal. This was torsion, by the way. Early torsion. It's shown on the Doppler, which I'll show you. But on grayscale, it's normal. If you wait longer and you have a two-day history of testicular pain, this is what you see. You're going to make the diagnosis. It's torsion, but it's too late. Not salvageable. Other findings in the grayscale. You can see a large epididymis. Okay? Here it is. Here's the testis, which is enlarged. That's nonspecific because epididymitis can cause that as well. It's just a finding. It doesn't help you in the diagnosis. You can see a redundant spermatic cord. That's useful, okay? The cord's twisted. And you can see the whirlpool sign. We've seen a lot of whirlpool signs. Here's a whirlpool sign. This mass. This is the cord. This is the cord twisted, okay? If you see that, that's torsion. That's the grayscale finding. And here it is. It's the cord. It's twisted. Okay, use Doppler. That's how you're going to make your diagnosis. It's essential. And early torsion on the testis looks normal. You're going to see absent flow. This is the case I showed you. Okay, right? With both testis look normal. There's no flow on the left. That's early torsion. Uh, venous flow will disappear before arterial. When there's late Torsion, you're going to see a lot of flow in the soft tissues, nothing in the testis. So early torsion, another one, right, left. The left testis is large, right, compared to the right. Normal flow, no flow, that's torsion. This is late torsion, very enlarged, heterogeneous testis, two different patients. Peripheral flow, because now the cremasteric vessels and the deferential arteries are taken over and you see flow in the soft tissues. There's no testicular flow. That means when you're really concerned about torsion, got to document flow in the center. If you see it in the periphery, it does not equal testicular perfusion. Look at the cord. Here's another twisted cord, okay? If you put color on, you may see flow in the cord because the twist is just below the cord here or maybe involving part of the cord so the blood can't uh, drain and it gets engorged. And here's our whirlpool again. And on color, you see something that almost looks like the intussusception I showed you, the whirlpool sign. Okay, pitfalls. Well, I showed you that normal flow is reduced in the prepubertal testis, and all you can do is compare the two sides. Partial torsion, the twist is less than 360 degrees. Uh, it can lead to an error in diagnosis. Intermittent torsion, you're not going to make a diagnosis. It's going to be difficult. Detorsion can lead to some confusion. So this is partial torsion, less than 360 degrees. Patient um, has left-sided pain. So this is the right. You see the normal vessels, right? And you see great flow. This is the left. Flow is decreased. But look at the Doppler, the pulse Doppler. There's decreased diastolic flow. There's reverse flow. And there's high resistance. Okay? You must know diastolic flow. That's partial torsion, maybe early torsion, whatever word you want to use. This was not completely twisted at surgery, but it was torse. Chronic intermittent torsion. I'm not sure how to make this diagnosis because if it's intermittent, the torse to testis can look normal and this patient looked normal. Came back, had intermittent pain. Came back once more, looked normal. And six months later, that's what it looked like. Infarcted. Here's another finding of intermittent torsion, a striated testis. You get these hypoechoic areas which radiate towards the mediastinum. Um, and they probably represent atrophy and uh, fibrosis, but it's associated with intermittent torsion. Finally, torsion and manual detorsion, which is what they try to do. So you get a reactive hyperemia. So this, normal, no flow torsion. And they detours it, and you get incredible, incredible flow. I mean, it looks like epididymorchitis, but, you know, the history is going to give you the clue. You knew it was a torsion, so this is just a detorsion. Extravaginal torsion, that's the lesion of the neonate. That occurs in utero. This is the one I showed you, infravaginal. 
where every, everything twists here. In the neonate, it twists just at the lower part of the cord, okay? I mean, the findings are going to be the same, but there's a different mechanism, supposedly. So it, the neonate, you diagnose it at birth. There's a swollen red scrotum. It's in, in utero. And testis can't be salvaged. So swollen red scrotum, neonate at birth. Testis is necrotic, right? Flow only in the soft tissues. That's in utero torsion. Another one, swollen red scrotum, necrotic testis with incredible flow. Essentially, it's a late torsion, similar to what we see in the adolescent. Okay, second cause of pain, torsion of an appendage, mimics testicular torsion. This one, though, sort of likes prepubertal boys, where torsion is more often in, pre in pubertal rather than prepubertal boys, but it can affect both ages. And there's a tender scrotal nodule on examination, which has a bluish discoloration called the blue dot sign. The treatment is conservative. Give them something for pain, leave it alone. There are a number of testicular appendages. These are little remnants of embryonic ducts. There is the appendix testis on the medial side. Then there's the appendix epididymis and the appendix fast. The one that undergoes torsion most often is this one. This one may, this one I have not seen. And that's, uh, these don't go to surgery, but I have some pathologic cases occasionally, and this is what it looks like. So on ultrasound, you see a third mass, an extra testicular mass. Here's the testis, here's the epididymis, and now you have this, which is hyper or isochoic to the testis, usually more 10 than 10 millimeters in length. Often the epididymal head gets enlarged, it's reactive. You see a reactive hydrocele, and the scrotal skin may be thickened. That's the diagnosis. Here's another one. Epididymis is enlarged. Here's the appendix, which is enlarged and echogenic. Testis is normal. You've got the normal vessels. You've got a lot of flow in the soft tissues. And the appendix, which is torsed, is avascular. And one more. Acute pain, the testis, scrotal skin, thickening, and the appendix is echogenic and enlarged. Lots of flow in the soft tissue, normal flow in the testis, and nothing in the torus appendix. What's the pitfall? There's always pitfalls, right? Occasionally, you're going to see the normal appendix, not torus, just normal. It's oval shape, and it's really, really small, less than five millimeters. Uh, whereas the torso ones are bigger than 10 millimeters and you've got all the associated findings. And usually see, you'll see this occasionally if you have a large hydrocele. What happens to these, you'll leave them alone. They may just involute, but sometimes they infarct and auto-amputate and become those scrotaliths, calcifications that we see. So acute scrotum, there is a differential. There are clues. I think there are clues to everything. You have to recognize part of it based on patient age, part clinical features, and part color Doppler. So thank you for your attention.